Oh, look. Foggy's found some bird droppings. <laughs> it could not to a nicer fella. Shut up. Where is it? Well, right now, it's oozing between the second and third fingers of my right hand. <laughs> so I want you to promise me, Foggy, when we get to the cat this morning, you'll let somebody else pass the buns. <laughs> that looks like a wood pigeon. It would damn well have to do it right where I put my hand. I don't wipe it down my jacket. Maybe it just looked like he was wiping it on your jacket. It's an impression you can easily get when somebody's... There he goes again! ...wiping his hand down your jacket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. How far is it to the ground? About 18 inches. <laughs> oh, God, I'll never make it. <laughs> ah, ah. Well, I've heard of no head for heights, but... You've got no legs, arms or eyes for it. <laughs> I like it on the ground. I really like being here on the ground. Gosh, look at me jacket. What are you griping about? Just look at me jacket. Precisely, just look at it. I've never seen anything that nature intended more for wiping bird droppings on than that. <laughs> What's it pulling a face for? Bit of that will do it. No? I noticed the pigeons soon got rid of it. <laughs> it's the only thing that worries me about going to heaven. Would I ever get used to the height? <laughs> that looked like Sid from the calf. Oh, sneaking about with a bedroll. Well, anything's an improvement on his sausage rolls. <laughs> if that was Sid, he's up to no good. Oh, that lucky beggar. Let's not jump to control. There's probably some perfectly reasonable explanation. He's having it off with a bird. <laughs> well, then I told you there'd be some reasonable explanation. Let's not start spreading gossip. I mean, I don't approve of this sort of thing, but his secret is safe with us. We're not women to be tittle or tattling about this sort of scandalous thing. It'll be that big dozy bus conductress is always talking about. <laughs> I must say, in circumstances like these, my suspicions tend spontaneously towards her behind the bacon counter at the court. It's just like Sid. He's never happy unless he's getting his divvy. <laughs> Some way he looks at that bus conductress, like a stamp collector with a penny black, just dying to lick her and stick her in his album. He wants to watch her. She hit me once with her ticket machine. <laughs> Only because she hadn't got anything heavier. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> and she's looking for someone. She's looking for Sid. Yes, but now look, if she starts asking questions, you've got to be very careful here not to drop him in it. Wouldn't it be rotten to drop him in it? Nothing. <laughs> Unthinkable. Hey, I wonder if it can take the joke. <laughs> Three teas. Yeah, and three of your delicious buns, please. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> You're up to something, aren't you? <laughs> Look at me when I'm talking to you! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Make up the mind of a chest companion because he was looking at me! What's going on? Well, I'm trying to rub some feeling back where I was struck with a spoon and he's busy suppressing a scream of agony. <laughs> My compliments, madam, on your skill with the spoon. You are acting very shifty. Shifty? Us? Never. Who's going to pay? He is. Yes. <laughs> Come on, whose turn is it? Is. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 three teas, please, Ivy, and uh, three buns, is it? Hmm? 42p. I don't know how he dare go messing about with other women. She'll kill him. A man 
man has to do what a man has to do. Lecherous husband murdered with spoon. <laughs> Hello, where's your bun? He's eating it. Oh, right. Yeah, it went like a ball down a drain. <laughs> They're dead easy, a bunch. And somebody else must be dead easy when she goes to meet a bloke in broad daylight carrying a bedding uh, roll. Uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, there's confidence for you. A bedding roll. And all I ever had all my life was a very large handkerchief. <laughs> have a bun. Have what? a bun. Never mind, have a bun. What's this about a bedding roll? <laughs> Clang. Uh, oh, oh, that's looking very tasty, Ivy. How do you keep that complexion? No, not the spoon, Ivy. Not the spoon. <laughs> Who have you seen with a bedding roll? And where was he, the swine? Who have we seen with a bedding roll? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we caught a, a, a glimpse. Yes, just the... the faintest movement in the trees. Trees? Oh. What the devil was he doing in the trees? Oh, when I say trees, I don't mean trees. I mean, what's she going to do with that spoon? <laughs> it could have been anybody. Anybody? <laughs> Just this figure flitting away. Hello, we said. There goes anybody. <laughs> it was him, wasn't it? My own husband heading for the trees with a bedding roll which he swore he'd only use for approved recreational purposes. It was undoubtedly just what he was doing. <laughs> I know what he was doing. He is your husband, Ivy. You ought to trust him more. Oh, oh give me one good reason. Can I have time to think about that? I mean, it's, it's, only, it's just the call of the wide open spaces, Ivy. Men have this thing. I know. It's what they're always trying to do with it that irritates me. <laughs> Seed. No, not oh, fair. Never. You just sit there and lie. Naturally. He's our mate. <laughs> you can't trust him. Well, you can, Ivy, if you look on the bright side. Bright side? What bright side? Well, you've got one great natural advantage, which should give you confidence in him, and that is that Sid is basically, when you get right down to it, fundamentally, a genuine, horrible-looking mess. That is quite true. I mean, who's going to want him? His ears are too big. <laughs> and what about that haircut? What idiot cuts it like that? I do. Oh. <laughs> it's beautifully styled. He's got no personality, you see, not an ounce of charm. So there you are, you see, Ivy. Count your blessings. It's, it's true. The fool. He'd be hopeless as a hippie. <laughs> He's not cut out for it. He goes all to pieces if he doesn't get good gravy. <laughs> <laughs> What's this about Abby? Who said he wants to be a hippie? Not say Never. Oh, I've seen the restlessness coming over him. I've tried to talk him out of it. I keep hitting him. Is he told you he wants to be a hippie? Oh, no, no, he never tells me anything. He just goes about sneakily. He's at that dangerous age. Why dangerous? Because I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Sid would never want to be a hippie. Then why would he take a bedding roll? Why does he keep sneaking out into the countryside? There's some perfectly ordinary explanation. Like what? He's chasing some bird. <laughs> Very tactfully put. Oh. Well, I cheered her up a treat, that yes. well, well, I thought it was better than letting her know he was going to be a hippie. No, it isn't. If he were going out collecting wild flowers or, or picking mushrooms, that might be better than being a hippie. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny you should say that, Ivy, because we were only thinking this morning in the trees, weren't we? We said, hello, there goes Sid with his bedding roll, off to collect some wild flowers or, or maybe pick, pick, pick some mushrooms. <laughs> don't worry, Ivy, please don't cry. You've still got me. Come, my love. I will give you a little solace. Well, he has his uses, you see. His old training beginning to pay off. He's developing a few manners. See, when I first took him in hand, he was no more than an uncouth little scruff. But with the, with the right tuition, he's becoming quite a couth little scruff. <laughs> oh, oh, you little devil, you. I was just trying to cheer her up by showing that she's still attractive to men. <laughs> what did she hit you with? Well, I don't know, but it were worth it. Come on, let's get you out of here. Hey, no. I think I'm in love with Ivy. <laughs> oh, I think Ivy is extremely handy on the spoon. Ah. Oh, Sid must be bruised all over. Yeah, when you keep colliding with Ivy like that, it must be a bit like being knocked down by a tram. It is. <laughs> oh, but it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine anyone volunteering to tangle with Ivy. That's got no soul. He hasn't got 
any romance in his body at all. Ah, but he has got a knife with attachments for opening cans. <laughs> <laughs> romance? I think it's disgusting, a chap your age. Hey, up. Oh. Just because I happen to have passed the first flush of you. <laughs> a man is as old as he feels. How old do you feel? As old as they'll let me. <laughs> oh, that Ivy, she's a powerful lass. Ooh. Still, after a couple more pints, I'll be fighting fit. Uh, uh, do you think you could settle for just one more pint and being sort of moderately fit? <laughs> oh, very well, Norm, if you insist. <laughs> Has they ever been in love, Foggy? <laughs> Mind your own business. <laughs> yeah, that's not to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. I just don't wish to discuss my personal affairs in this cheap drinking establishment. <laughs> cheap? <laughs> you wait till you go up to buy your own. <laughs> I wonder if Cleggy's ever been in love. Well, he was married, wasn't he? Oh, aye. Uh, but that's always a major snag to your love life. <laughs> what sort of birds do you like, Foggy? Look, are you absolutely sure you'll want another round after this? Oh, he really is a cheapskate. Well, you don't really need it, you know. You've had enough excitement for one morning. Excitement? What are you talking about? My nerves are as steady as a rock. <laughs> You're shaking like a leaf. Ah, oh, yes, but then he is leading a life of sin and dissipation. Only since I left school. <laughs> no. When your missus were alive, did you ever go off pussyfooting it with another woman? <laughs> don't ask questions of that indelicate nature. Well, the army doctors used to. <laughs> they were always inquiring about my love life when I went sick. Yes, well, medical men have their reasons for asking. Not when you go sick with flat feet. <laughs> no, no, they was fishing. They wanted to know about me and Brunhilde. <laughs> Brunhilde? What? Where? Where? <laughs> no, I mean, who was Brunhilde? Who oh, where? I thought for a minute he meant she was here. <laughs> Why have you gone wide? Well, nearly wide. Now, come on, tell, tell us about it. Who was this fabulous Brunhilde? Well, he just picked some weird names to go out with. Oh, I've been out with weirder names than that. Yeah, yeah what was the strangest name you've ever been out with? Cyril. Yeah, well, that's enough <laughs> Why were the army doctors interested in you and Brunhilde? It wasn't only the army doctors, it was the whole cap. You see, Brunhilde was this great big ATS bird. And nobody else would go out with her because she had this reputation for brutality. Here we go. No, no, it's the truth. It's the truth, I'm telling you. But I knew how to handle it. With this whip and chair. Yeah, yeah, but they, they wanted to know about Brunhilde, you see, because she had this big pin-up of a fella hanging over her bed. Well, I imagine a lot of ATS girls had pin-up pictures over their beds. Of Hitler? <laughs> oh, he is a liar. Hey, up! There's Brunhilde. Hello, my love. Oh. What's your talking about this? You're in love with me! Isn't it nice? She still remembers him. <laughs> this is Brunhilde Mark II. <laughs> Come and sit down, love, and have a drink. Well, sit down somewhere. All right. I'll have just one. Just one? But if you're planning on getting me tipsy so I don't know what I'm doing, you can forget it. <laughs> forget it. I have forgotten it. I'll have a brandy and ginger ale. <laughs> oh, go on, you invited her. I tell you what, we'll go 50-50. I'll buy the ginger ale. <laughs> We'll be with you in a minute, Nora. <laughs> Once he's got the combination. <laughs> Cozy. Oh, great. <laughs> Smacky. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder how he's getting on with the brandy and ginger ale. I, I think I'll go and see. Uh, no. No. <laughs> I think I'll come up with thee, no? What did you invite her for? How did I know she was going to stay? She usually gallops off when she sees me. <laughs> she started to appreciate you. Norman, you could have a point. Well, look, as soon as she's got that down her throat, get rid of her. How? Well, you will think of something if you ever stand up brandy and ginger ale. Oh, uh, I'll think of something, I can tell you. 
There we are, my little chickadee. There's your brandy. <laughs> she think can afford to get her tipsy till she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Do something. Do something. Huh? Oh, well, uh, nice to see me, Nora. I'm going to be on my way now, I'm afraid. Uh, you see, I'm breaking in this new bookie. <laughs> Have you seen my Wally? What does she want? I mean, my husband. Have you lost him? That's a lie. Why should I have lost him? He'll have gone off somewhere, that's all. He'll come back, won't he? Ah. He'll always come back. <laughs> uh, not today, Nora. Not today. She's squeezing me. <laughs> <laughs> pull her off, pull her off. Well, she's not hurting you, she's just upset, that's all. That's a lie. Who's upset? Why should I be upset? It's going numb. <laughs> oh, uh, old my hand. Peggy goes to pieces if he's grabbed by a woman. Well, you can get a lovely bite. <laughs> now, let's approach this logically. Now, when did you last see your Wally? It wasn't the last. I shall see him again. I know I shall see him again. It's not the end of the world because your husband goes off with a bedding roll. <laughs> Is it? Ah, ah, she's got it again. She's got it again. Ah, ah. Nora, Nora, dear, don't distress yourself. No, no, no. No, no, no. Wally would never abandon his pigeons. <laughs> if there's anything we can do. Well, I'll have another brandy and ginger ale. <laughs> We owe it to those two abandoned wives to find out what's going on round here. You're quite right, Foggy. I'm feeling dead nosy, too. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> <sighs> you know, I think I am in love with Nora Batty. <laughs> we saw him about here. And he went in that direction. Just watch me. You just watch me. I want you to take advantage of every bit of natural cover. <laughs> Something. That's oh, a damn silly place to let cattle wander. <laughs> so that's what they mean when they say, get your knees brown. <laughs> Wood smoke. Oh, I thought you were aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits die hard. He's probably doing a bit of cooking. For the little people of the forest. Ah, oh, fairy chips. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one here. There's no one here. What? The, what? What do we do now? What do we do now? We wait, right here. Well, we've got them trapped, haven't we? Gee, whatever they are, they've got to come back to the fire. And we'll be waiting, right here. <laughs> what would happen if the sun went out? There'd be a big rush on gas heaters. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be sure. It might. Like the power stations. So that's why he's been a scruff all his life. No point in caring if the sun's going to go out. Well, it might. How the dickens can the sun go out? Suppose God went. <laughs> Happy birthday to us. I thought you didn't believe in God. Listen, with the kind of look I've been having on the Gigi's lately, I believe in somebody. Somebody who might just think it's funny to go. <laughs> Get up home. Don't be hanging around my campfire. Get up home. Is that what you said? Get off home. Well, that's a nice attitude to take to three regular customers. You can take in, can't you, when you're not wanted? Sid, we've been eating your food for years. We couldn't have had a bigger hint than that. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. 30 bob. That's the big 30 bob each. Oh, shut up. We're not being a party to any attempt at bribery. I tell you what, Sid. For two quid, we'll go, and for three, we'll drag Foggy with us. <laughs> I'm staying here. Oh, he's got no flair for commerce. Ah, yes, but then he's had his trouser knee in cow dock. Now, that's bound to unsettle your judgment. Listen, we're all mates, aren't we? 
Let us come and get our clothes on. Clothes? Clothes? Ah, look! <laughs> My God, dear, I've gone hippie. Hey, no wonder he offered us money. I bet them stinging nettles have got him right up to his false teeth. How's he going to get home in that condition if the sun goes out? Just throw our clothes over here. There's a good mate. No, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll turn our backs and you can come and get your clothes. <laughs> we won't look. Are you sure? Of course we're sure. You're not to look. No, well, get on with it, that man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm coming first. And uh, whatever you happen to see, you've not got to laugh. As if we laugh. I mean, who's going to laugh? <laughs> the idea. I'm coming. Get, get on with, with it. it. <laughs> hey, he's got bells on it. <laughs> oh, he does. I think he really does. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. They could be earrings. <laughs> We said we wouldn't look. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Is there other suit at the cleaners then, Sid? Pay no attention to them, Sid. You really look quite. <laughs> you said you wouldn't laugh. That jingle jangle. Oh, I knew folk would think it was hilarious. They could be right. <laughs> a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Is there much doing in stagecoach and road bail circles in this neck of the woods, Sid? We're doing it for charity. Little Miss Charity, the rancher's daughter. I bet she's been kidnapped by these desperados. <laughs> and all the townsfolk got together and elected Sid to form a posse. I mean, just look at the size of him round the gun belt. That's a flaming puzzle. Watch his short house. Oh. <laughs> well, I suppose it'll be him who's been rusting all those damn cattle and trading them where people are bound to put their knees. Put <laughs> your flaming hands down. You can't do anything round here without your mates die laughing. That's why we're not doing it for our vicar at home, but for him over at Little Middle Thong. What's the doing over at Little Middle Thong? Robbing the Yorkshire petty man. <laughs> we ought to warn the sheriff. Yeah, who is the sheriff at Little Middle Thong? Yeah. Who is the head honcho down there, hombre? <laughs> It'll be her that runs the Red Lion. She's tough enough. And look at the room she's got for pinning a star on. Come on, Sid, will you kindly tell us what a pie and mushy peas merchant is doing in this hot tamales outfit? If you must know, we're part of a pageant. Huh? Which bar? We're giving a fast draw exhibition. I've been doing that to Nora Batty for years. <laughs> one twirling exhibition. Oh, well, of course, naturally, yes. Well, it goes without saying, doesn't it? I mean, what else would a bunch of Yorkshire lads be doing? <coughs> that. And we're also staging other associated scenes of the prairie. You might as well come out, the rest of you. Have they gone? No, they haven't gone. <laughs> hey, up, it's Wally Batty. Not wild Wally Batty. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, old Dimer. Press off. <laughs> disaster. Rubbish. They're only jealous. Every red-blooded male's got a secret desire to get dressed up like this. Well, them three in the trees have had enough. You've got a strike on your hands there. Checks. <laughs> Come back. Come back, you three. Where do you think you're going? You can't pack it in now. We've got an audience waiting. Uh, now look what you've done. You made me lose half my pageant. What's the vicar going to say? Reach for the sky. <laughs> That's what he's all about, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> Hello, how nice of you to have cut. Are there any more of you? Oh! <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Vicar. <laughs> Me, big chief corporal sign writer. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, good afternoon. <laughs> Me, Mrs. Chief Corporal Sign. Ah. <laughs> good afternoon. 
Me little gaping fly. <laughs> he speak with Fort Trump. Him big gaping fly. <laughs> Tomahawks. <laughs> Moccasins to you, too. <laughs> For more info on your favourite summer wine stars or anything else for that matter, press red, then yellow on your digital satellite remote. Next, though, we're going super stellar with Dick Emery. He's found some bird droppings. <laughs> it could not to a nicer fella. Shut up. Where is it? Well, right now it's oozing between the second and third fingers of my right hand. <laughs> I want you to promise me, Foggy, when we get to the cat this morning, you'll let somebody else pass the buns. <laughs> that looks like a wood pigeon. It would damn well have to do it right where I put my hand. <laughs> well, don't wipe it down my jacket. Maybe it just looked like he was wiping it on your jacket. It's an impression you can easily get when somebody's... There he goes again! ...wiping his hand down your jacket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. How far is it to the ground? About 18 inches. <laughs> oh, God, I'll never make it. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Well, I've heard of no head for heights, but you've got no legs, arms or eyes for it. <laughs> I like it on the ground. I really like being here on the ground. Gosh, look at me jacket. What are you griping about? Just look at me jacket. Precisely, just look at it. I've never seen anything that nature intended more for wiping bird droppings on than that. <laughs> What's it pulling a face for? Bit of that won't do it. No? I noticed the pigeons soon got rid of it. <laughs> It's the only thing that worries me about going to heaven. Would I ever get used to the height? <laughs> that looked like Sid from the calf. Oh, sneaking about with a bedroll. Well, anything's an improvement on his sausage rolls. <laughs> if that was Sid, he's up to no good. Oh, the lucky beggar. Let's not jump to conclusions. There's probably some perfectly reasonable explanation. He's having it off with a bird. <laughs> well, then, I told you there'd be some reasonable explanation. Let's not start spreading gossip. I mean, I don't approve of this sort of thing, but his secret is safe with us. We're not women to be tittle or tattling about this sort of scandalous thing. It'll be that big dozy bus conductress is always talking about. I must say, in circumstances like these, my suspicions tend spontaneously towards her behind the bacon counter at the court. <laughs> It's just like Sid. He's never happy unless he's getting his divvy. <laughs> Seeing the way he looks at that bus conductress, like a stamp collector with a penny black, just dying to lick her and stick her in his album. He wants to watch her. She hit me once with her ticket machine. <laughs> Only because she hadn't got anything heavier. <laughs> he's not here. <laughs> She's looking for someone. She's looking for Sid. Yes, but now look, if she starts asking questions, you've got to be very careful here not to drop him in it. Wouldn't it be rotten to drop him in it? Nothing. <laughs> Unthinkable. <laughs> hey, I wonder if you can take the joke. <laughs> Three teas. 
Yeah, and three of your delicious bones, please. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> You're up to something, aren't you? Look at me when I'm talking to you! Oh. Oh. Man, got the mind of it just complaining because he was looking at me. What's going on? Well, I'm trying to rub some feeling back where I was struck with a spoon and he's busy suppressing a scream of agony. My compliments, madam, on your skill with the spoon. You are acting very shifty. Shifty? Us? Never. Who's going to pay? He is. <laughs> Come on, whose turn is it? Is. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 three uh, teas, please, Ivy, and uh, three buns, is it? Hmm? 42p. I don't know how he dare go messing about with other women. She'll kill him. A man has to do what a man has to do. Lecturous husband murdered with spoon. Hello? Where's your bun? He's eating it. Oh, my right. yeah, It went like a ball down a drain. They're dead easy, a bunch. And somebody else must be dead easy when she goes to meet a bloke in broad daylight carrying a bedding uh, roll. Um, no. your voice. <laughs> I mean, there's confidence for you. A bedding roll. And all I ever had all my life was a very large handkerchief. <laughs> have a bun. Have what? a bun. Never mind, have a bun. What's this about a bedding roll? <laughs> Clang. I... Uh oh! That's looking very tasty, Ivy. How do you keep that complexion? No, not the spoon, Ivy. Not the spoon. Who have you seen with a bedding roll? And where was he, the swine? Who have we seen with a bedding roll? Oh. <laughs> Maybe we caught a, a, a glimpse. Yes, just the, the faintest movement in the trees. Trees? Oh. The devil was he doing in the trees? Oh, when I say trees, I don't mean trees. I mean, what's she going to do with that spoon? <laughs> it could have been anybody. Anybody? <laughs> just this figure. Flitting away. Hello, we said. There goes anybody. <laughs> it was him, wasn't it? My own husband, heading for the trees with a bedding roll, which he swore he'd only use for approved recreational purposes. <laughs> it was undoubtedly just what he was doing. <laughs> I know what he was doing. He is your husband, Ivy. You ought to trust him more. Oh, give me one good reason. And I have time to think about that. I mean, it's, it's, only... it's just the call of the wide open spaces, Ivy. Men have this thing. I know. It's what they're always trying to do with it that irritates me. <laughs> not Sid. No, not oh, Sid. Never. You just sit there and lie. Naturally. He's our mate. <laughs> you can't trust him. Well, you can, Ivy, if you look on the bright side. Bright side? What bright side? Well, you've got one great natural advantage which should give you confidence in him, and that is that Sid is basically, when you get right down to it, fundamentally, a genuine, horrible-looking mess. That is quite true. I mean, who's going to want him? His ears are too big. And what about that haircut? What idiot cuts it like that? I do. Oh. <laughs> it's beautifully styled. He got no personality, you see, not an ounce of charm. So there you are, you see, Ivy. Count your blessings. It's, it's true. The fool. He'd be hopeless as a hippie. <laughs> He's not cut out for it. He goes all to pieces if he doesn't get good.